Hi there, folk. We are going to look at maps. And I love this section on maps because there's just so much interesting stuff crammed into this learning area. Okay. Now, before we even start uh, uh, focusing on a one sort of map, let's look at the types of maps that we could get. Let's have a look here. So maps can be broken up into five different sections. The first one is national road maps, and that's what we're going to look at in this uh, session today. Then we get something called strip maps, we get road maps, we get complex maps. In other words, maps of a specific little housing complex, uh, of a specific little area. And then we get this, and this is really interesting, elevation maps. And elevation maps are maps that show different heights of a specific route. So let's not waste time, let's get going straight away. So what are national road maps all about? Well, national routes in South Africa are a class of roads and freeways which connect major cities and are designated with route numbers beginning with N, from N1 to N18. So in South Africa, we name all our main roads. Okay, and what do I mean by main road? A main road or a highway that connects the main cities. And we number those uh, beginning with the letter N. N meaning a national road. Okay? So a national road is not governed by a particular municipality. Okay? It's governed by uh, an organization, Sandrail, and they organize or make sure that that road is maintained. So the maintenance of that road is not the responsibility of different little uh, municipalities. Got that? Because national means it belongs to the whole country. It's taking you from one side of the country to another side of the country. Let's have a look at a national road map. So consider the map which shows all the national routes in South Africa. Okay, so here we go. We know we've got 18 national routes. This map doesn't show all of them, but it does give us a good idea on the main ones. Now, national route number one goes right across the country, okay? Starting from Cape Town and away it goes. Let's get a nice color here. From Cape Town and it goes all, all the way through Worcester, through Beaufort West, goes out of the Western Cape, goes along through Colesburg, cuts into the Free State, goes through Bloemfontein, comes through into Gauteng, Johannesburg, Pretoria, and then goes all the way into the Limpopo province and cuts through Polokwane and right up to our border. That's national road number one. National road number two starts in Cape Town as well and goes from Cape Town through Hermanus, George, Neisner, Port Elizabeth, Grahamstown, East London, cuts through Mtata, goes to Port Shepston, Durban, then cuts through Richards Bay and look, goes all the way through to Johannesburg as well. Another huge, long national road. Let's see if we can find national road number three. It's a much shorter route, but if you look at it, national road three is here. Take note how all these national roads begin within. So national road three is the route between Johannesburg through Harry Smith, Lady Smith, and Durban. Okay, nowadays just goes a little bit around Harry Smith. Doesn't quite cut through the town of Harry Smith. It cuts just past, sorry, Lady Smith cuts just past Lady Smith. Okay, you get other national roads. Uh, they are so important roads, but they're not as long either. For example, National Road Number Seven, starting in Cape Town, and it goes through uh, Springbok and goes off to our Namibia border, all right? So you can get a good idea of all these national routes. Now, folk, when we're traveling from one city to another city, main cities or large cities, normally we'd follow these national routes. Why? Because those roads are kept in good order and uh, most of them are freeways. In other words, we can travel a good 120 kilometers an hour. 
on average. Okay, not always 120 though, but a lot of parts of these roads, the speed limit is 120 kilometers an hour. Okay, so looking at that, let's ask ourselves a few questions. Which national road is from Springbok to Pretoria? So we know we've got Pretoria here, and we're now going to find Springbok. And we're looking for Springbok. Where on earth is Springbok over here? National Road from Pretoria to Springbok, and I can't find Springbok. Here we go. Here's Springbok over there. Okay, so I should have known that. Hey? Right, my geography teachers are going to have a heart attack. How did you not know where Springbok is? Right, so the National Road I'm following from Pretoria all the way through to Springbok is the N14. My next question, which National Road starts or goes through Durban? Okay, so which National Road starts or goes through Durban? We've already looked at that. We said the N2 goes through Durban and the N3 starts in Durban, starts or ends in Durban. Okay, but it, um, we get on to the N3 here and we N2 also goes through the Durban um, metropolitan area. Now, which towns shown on the map have the N1 running through them? Now, folk, we've already done that, haven't we? We looked at the N1 right in the beginning, and we say, right, Cape Town, Worcester, Beaufort West, Colesburg, Bloemfontein, Johannesburg, Pretoria, and Pollock Rane. Right. Now, we've got to look at something else. And when we normally get a national road map, not only do we want to know how to get from one major city to another, we also want to know the distance. And so what we make use of is something called a distance chart. What is a distance chart? Let's have a look. A distance chart is a chart which shows the distances between major towns or cities. Now, here on your screen is a distance chart. Let me show you how we're actually going to use it. If I'm wanting to find the distance, let's say between George and Durban, I'm going to look at George and I'm going to find Durban. Now George goes all the way down and Durban runs across. Okay, so the distance from Durban, now Durban can run down here or it can go across. I'm going to say George meets Durban over here at 1,319 kilometers. So if I got in a motor car, got in in Durban, and drove to George, my speedometer would actually say, hey, you've actually done 1,319 kilometers. Do you see how we use that? Let's say we want to find the distance between Johannesburg and Cape Town. I'm going to look at Cape Town. I'll drop a line down in Cape Town. Johannesburg goes across, meets Cape Town at 1,402 kilometers. Let's see the type of questions which they can ask. What is the distance between George and Bloemfontein? And then, what is the distance between Cape Town and Johannesburg? Also asking, what is the distance between Durban and Port Elizabeth? So first one, what's the distance between George and Bloemfontein? So, folk, George, well, first of all, Bloemfontein's here. Take notice, okay? Bloemfontein's here and Bloemfontein's also there. Here's George. So, Bloemfontein meets George at 773 kilometers. 773. Now, what's the distance between Cape Town and Johannesburg? We've already done that, eh? Johannesburg, Cape Town, 1,000. 402 kilometers. And then our final question was, what is the distance between Durban and Port Elizabeth? So Durban goes down here, Port Elizabeth, we're going to slide along and meet here at 984 kilometers. Guys, you've got to know how to use uh, distance charts. Now, right. Um, now, let's have a look. Use both the national road map and the distance chart to determine the shorter route when traveling between Cape Town and Durban. Okay, so here we're going to give you two routes and we're going to give you both a national road map and a distance chart. And the first route we're looking at was the route Cape Town to Bloemfontein to Durban. 
All right. So Cape Town to Bloemfontein to Durban. So we're traveling from Cape Town all the way here to Bloemfontein. And then we're going following this road and we're going to hit the N3 all the way down to Durban. Right. So we now need to say, well, how far is that trip? Well, when I look at it, I'm going Cape Town through Bloemfontein. Cape Town to Bloemfontein is 1,004 kilometers. Then from Bloemfontein to Durban, we're going Bloemfontein. Here's Durban. We're going to hit it at 634 kilometers. When I add that up, I'm going to land up with 1,638 kilometers. Now, there's another route which we could follow. And the other route is simply this, that we're starting in Cape Town as well, but we're going to Port Elizabeth, then East London, and then Durban. So when I look at this, Cape Town, all the way to Port Elizabeth, then we're going on to East London, there we go, and then we get to Durban. So Cape Town to Port Elizabeth first. My map or rather my distance chart Cape Town to Port Elizabeth we're going all the way down Cape Town Port Elizabeth comes across and we meet at 769 so we got 769 kilometers then we're going from Port Elizabeth and we're going to East London East London runs down Port Elizabeth goes across and it's 310 kilometers now from Port Elizabeth or rather from East London, we said we are going to go to, um, straight on to Durban, is it? Yes, East London to Durban. So from East London, we're going to Durban, Durban over here, East London, 674 kilometers. So what we're now going to do is add 9 and 4 is 13, 7, 13, 14, 15, 6, 7, 10, 17. Right, let's have a look at that. So the one distance from Cape Town through Bloemfontein is 1,638 kilometers. The distance from Cape Town around this way is 1,753 kilometers. So if I say 1,753 and I subtract 1,638, I'm going to land up here. We're going to borrow there, 13 minus... 8 is 5, change that to 4, I get 1, 1. The difference is 115 kilometers, which is a good hour added to your trip. So when I looked at this initially, I would have thought that's a lot quicker than going all the way around. But folk, it's actually 100 kilometers longer. Yeah. Okay, let's now look at this. Use the formula below to determine how long each route will take. If a vehicle averages 90 kilometers per hour, and if the driver takes 15 minutes stop after every 200 kilometers. So we've got the two routes. We got route one, and I have route two. Now, route one, we said, is going to take us or we're going to be 1,638 kilometers. So 1,638 kilometers. And route 2, we said, was 1,753. 1,753 kilometers. Okay. So we want to know how long is this trip actually going to take us. All right. So, first of all, how many times are we going to stop? Now, remember, we need to take a break. We're driving this long way from Cape Town to Durban. We're just going to go for it. But as a human being, I get tired. As a human being, my concentration begins to lapse. And as such, I now make a decision that after traveling 200 kilometers, I'm going to stop for 15 minutes. So let's have a look at this. I've now got 1,638 kilometers. I'm going to divide that by 200 kilometers. Right, let's take out our calculator. 
and we're going to say I've got 1,638 kilometers divided by 200 means I've got 8,19 times that I'm going to hit 200. Now, folk, I want to show you this because now we need to determine, am I going to stop eight times or am I going to stop nine times? Well, when I've done eight uh, stops, my ninth stop, before I can get to my ninth stop, I've already reached Durban. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I've got, um, start at naught, I've got 200. I've got 400. I've got 600. I've got 800. I've got 1,000. I've got 1,200, 1,400, 1,600, 1,800. So already 1,800, I've already passed Durban. So I don't need to count that stop. So when I add up my stops, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 stops. Do you understand that? Appropriate rounding. So here I'm going to stop 8 stops times. On this route, I've got 1,753. I'm going to divide that by 200 as well. And we're going to say here 1,753 divided by 200. And folk, it's also going to give us 8. 8 comma 7, but 8 stops. Now we need to remember that later on in our calculation. I want us to stop and look at this formula. Speed is equal to distance over time. In fact, it's an easy formula to remember because if I had to say to you, tell me any speed, you would say uh, 100 kilometers per hour. In other words, 100 kilometers per hour. Now, per is like divide, isn't it? And um, 100 kilometers is distance. So I've got speed is equal to distance, per means divide, and hour is time. And that's how I come across this formula. Now I've been given my speed, haven't I? Yes, I have. I've been told if I average 90 kilometers an hour, how long will this trip take me? So we're going to say, okay, so speed is 90 kilometers per hour right? The distance I'm traveling is 1,638 kilometers, and I want to work out how long this is going to take me. In other words, my time. So I'm going to cross multiply and get time times 90 equals 1638. I want to keep time by itself, so time is going to be 1638 I times by 90, I divide by 90. Now, watch this phenomenal stuff. How long is this going to take me? Well, 1,638 kilometers. I divide it by uh, a time of, um, or rather, a speed, average speed of 90, and I get this as my time. 18,2 hours. All right. Now, what's comma 2 of an hour? There are two ways of doing this. We could say 0, 2 of an hour, we're multiplying that by 60 to see how many minutes. Okay, so I'm going to say, in fact, I'm going to keep this on my calculator. I'm going to say 60 times 2 is going to give me 12 minutes. All right, so 12 minutes is what the, uh, the minutes. 12 hours, 12 minutes is what it's going to take me. Now, I want to show you how you do that on your calculator. Can you see I've got 18 comma 2 as my answer? Well, look what happens when I push my time button. And we've spoken about this time button pretty often in the series. When I push my time button, look what I get. 18 hours, 12 minutes. Exciting stuff. But that's not where my answer is going to end. Because, if you remember, I've got 18 hours, 12 minutes. I have to stop every 200 kilometers. And we said, for this, I'm going to stop eight times. And every time I stop, I'm going to stop for 15 minutes. So we need to say, well, okay, 15 minutes, 
we're going to multiply that by 8. When I multiply that 8, 8 fives are 40, 8 ones are 8, plus 4, 120 minutes. And we know 120 minutes is 2 hours. So I add 2 hours to my journey. My whole journey is going to take me 20 hours and 12 minutes. Okay? In reality, they'd probably give you this question and say round to the nearest hour. Because if I'm going from Cape Town to Durban and someone says, how long is this trip going to take you? I'm going to probably say to them, it's going to take me approximately 20 hours. I'm not going to say, well, you know, it's going to take me 20 hours and exactly 12 minutes. Okay, really doesn't do that because anything can affect the time. So with this kind of question, we probably say, you know, it's going to take me approximately 20 hours. So your, your examiner might say, round your answer to the nearest hour, or if they don't, you would have to give a precise answer such as 20 hours and 12 minutes. Now, it goes on and it says exactly the same thing. We now have to do everything again, but using root number two. Okay, so root number two was 1,753 kilometers. So we've got 1,753 kilometers. Remember, speed is distance divided by time. Now, my speed, we're still averaging 90 kilometers an hour. Our distance is 1,753, and we're going to try and find time. Time, therefore, is 1,753 divided by 90. So my calculator is going to do it for me, and we're going to say 1,753 divided by 90 gives me a wacko answer, I push my time button and look what I get. 19 hours, 28 minutes and 40 seconds. 19 hours, 28 minutes and 40 seconds. Again, on this route, we're stopping 8 times. And 8 times 15 minutes is another 2 hours. When we add that up, we're going to get 21 hours, 28 minutes and 40 seconds. Rounding that off, we're going to say between 21 and 22 hours or 21 and a half hours. Okay, right. Exciting stuff, eh? Hey? Now, it goes on and says, determine for each case how much will the petrol will cost if the vehicle travels 12 kilometers on one liter of petrol. Now, do you remember for our first distance, we're not going to do it for both because time's against us, but for our first distance, we got 1,638 kilometers. So with 1,638 kilometers, we told that our car can travel 12 kilometers on one liter. So we're trying to find out how many liters do we need in order to get to Cape Town. So if my car needs one liter for every 12 kilometers, how many 12 kilometers are there in 1,638 kilometers? So let's do that. I'm going to say, right, brew, 1,638. I'm going to divide it by 12, and I actually land up that I need 136,5 liters of petrol. Each petrol cost me 14 Rand 25. Okay, so we've got this answer on our calculator. We're going to multiply it now by 14 Rand 25, and I land up with this phenomenal answer of 1,945 Rand. 1,945 Rand and 13 cents. Nice questions, eh? That's what I love about map work, is that you think it's just about maps, but it's actually not. It's also about calculating how many kilometers we got to travel, calculating the time it's going to take us, calculating how much petrol this is going to be, fantastic stuff. And it's lovely when you're organizing a holiday because it helps you sort out a budget. So our time is up. Let's just summarize quickly what we've done in this segment. We covered the following. We've looked at national roadmaps. We've analyzed and applied distance charts. And we've worked with speed, distance, and time. Well, folks, it's time for an ad break. And I'll see you shortly. Cheers.